Praise be Jesus and Mary. In today's gospel, we begin to notice a transition in the way our Lord is presenting himself to the disciples. He's trying to get them now accustomed, as we hear at the end of this gospel, to something which for the rest of us is actually very important. And that is, no longer are we to see Jesus in his humanity. We are to recognize him in the breaking of the bread, at the holy sacrifice of the mass. Now both the divinity is hidden as well as the humanity. In fact, this is a, an important point sometimes which people may miss when uh, we know from St. Paul, uh, he says at one point, you know, those who you know, see don't have faith because faith is, is in believing in what is unseen. And so then how is it that Thomas is, you know, it's said of Thomas when, you know, he says, well, I will not believe unless I can put my finger into the hole and my hand into the side of our Lord. And then he would make a profession of faith when this would in fact happen. And that's the real faith of Thomas. He doesn't recognize a man, but he recognized his God and the human hidden in the humanity of our Lord. And our Lord wants us, too, which is important for us to recognize not only that humanity, but that divinity which is hidden in the Blessed Sacrament. You know, we're not too many, you know, a couple more Sundays, uh, a few more than a couple, but towards the end we'll be celebrating Corpus Christi and some of these things will be brought again to us. But for just a moment, just to recognize the importance of this transition as the apostles are still is still sorting things out. Things are happening as we, you know, we're already, you know, four days into celebrating Easter, and all this is actually already on just Easter Sunday. All these things that have happened and we're reflecting on. So it's happening. Things are actually happening very rapidly. Um, one can, per, can perhaps appreciate the confusion uh, that the disciples are undergoing. You know. The, Everything is just, you know, they've barely gotten over the shock of the crucifixion. The next thing they know, they hear, he's walking around again? <laughs> Where? Where is he? Why, does he? Why doesn't he show himself to us? Why don't we see him? And it's because we have to get used to seeing him in another way. They were all, you might say, in a certain sense, his exhortation to St. Mary Magdalene is something for all of us. You know, we need to cling to our Lord who is in heaven. Not to the, his presence, uh, as it were, his humanity <clears throat> here in this world and to redirect ourselves in our daily lives you know to focusing on this this divine mystery you know our lord present with us always you know sometimes as saint Teresa of avila beautifully talks about this you know we sometimes we read the scriptures and oh you know what it would be like can you imagine you know sit down and have a a, a supper with our lord you know have him come into your house and sit down and break bread you know, have a nice meal with you and all these kinds of things, uh, to tell him from your heart right, right to his face, and yet we can do this. We can come and we can have a face-to-face. -face. We can have an intimate conversation with our Lord. All we got to do is pay a visit to him, or even better yet, to talk to him. You know, how often I'm, I mention this, you know, we go out of our way, and I don't not, in no way want to belittle, of course, adoration of our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, but how about when we are the tabernacle? How about when we are the monstrance? In other words, how about when we have received him and he is within us? St. Teresa, Saint Teresa of Alice says there is no more intimate time to talk to our Lord, no better time to talk to him, to tell him our needs, to tell him our troubles, to tell him our difficulties, because he's within us. There's no more intimate time that we have with our Lord than just after we have received him in Holy Communion. St. John Vianney would even you know, go so far as to say, you know, he, he gives indications that he's with us for up to even a half an hour. Particularly because you know, if, we, if we chew on our chew on the Blessed Sacrament, well, there may still be particles within our mouth. Uh, not to get into all of it, but as long as the real presence is there, then Jesus is there. 
And he would caution people, you know, after receiving our Lord, you know, to be careful of anything that might come out of the mouth because our Lord may still be present. You know, to be aware of, and that's part of, you know, our belief in the real present, that our Lord is whole and entire, even in the smallest of fragments. And to believe that. It's not just because it's a small particle doesn't mean that Christ is, well, he's only kind of partly present. No, he's wholly present. Every time we break the host, he's actually multi- his presence is multiplied, whole and entire. It's not like, well, you've got, you know, well, you only got, no, well, nobody likes that. I, I try not to give people half a host either, but, but we have to believe that even if you get half a host, he, our Lord's not, it's not like you have received half our Lord. You received a whole Jesus, not a half a Jesus, a little part. No, you receive him a whole entire, even with the smallest fragment. Another thing, too, you know, in the shock of the Gospels, in the shock of all the events with the disciples, as they really hadn't grasped what our Lord was here for. You know, they talk about as things in the past, things, you know, now it's, it's all over. And to realize even in the events of our lives, even world events or whatever else, that everything is really in God's hands. You know, we can't maybe affect big changes in the world, not by ourselves, but with, with the power of God, with our prayers. You know, doing what we can in the little spheres, you know, we can realize there's big things going on in the world. Um, all we need to do is to do what we can in, with those people, if you will, that touch our lives. You know, St. Peter and St. John today, and we hear the first reading, they made a man walk and by the name, you know, calling upon the name of our Lord. And that would touch the community. It would draw the community to Christ. We don't necessarily have to go. And all they were, they were heading to do was to go off and pray. They weren't, well, you know, I think we'll go to the temple today and uh, we'll see if we can get some, you know, work some miracle or something. They're simply trying to respond to the call of their Lord and their lives and the little ways that he calls us. And as I've already said, that's, it's not a matter of, of going out and, you know, like I'm doing now, preaching the gospel. You sit there and talk about the gospel passage to people. It's our living it. This is our preaching. Now, even before I get here, my real preaching is in the example of my life. That's the first preaching that we all are called to. You know, what issues from my mouth, the, the words that come out of my mouth are edifying. The people can already tell that there's something different about us. I don't have to walk around with a t- not that there's necessarily anything wrong with a t-shirt that says, you know, I'm a Catholic or, or whatever else, you know, I love the Lady of Guadalupe or whatever the pious things that we put on our, you know, that we like to wear, you know, it's kind of a profession of our faith. That's nice, but if that's the only way people can know that I'm a Catholic is because of the t-shirt or hat that I wear on my head, well, then something's really wrong with my with my profession of faith. People should know I'm a Catholic just because of the way I talk and behave. Remember, that's, I don't know if you picked that up, but you know, Peter is, you know, when Peter is in the midst of being afraid and denying our Lord, one of the accusations is to say, surely you must be one of his disciples because even your speech betrays you. And it's not because he talked like a Galilean. It's because he didn't talk like other people. He didn't, re- he didn't find things funny that before God aren't funny. This whole way of life, you know, in the Christian life, it's something that really touches on our, in our very being. Whether we're with others and whether we're by ourselves, everywhere, everywhere I'm a Catholic, because God is always present with us. We never leave him alone. I should say he never leaves us alone. We, we might leave him alone by our sins and chase him out of our life by our sins or try to chase him out. But then he pursues us. 
in this great love of our Lord. Let us continue this journey with the disciples, asking our Lord, especially in Our Lady, to help us to recognize and to be grateful for the presence of our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, that we can always come to him and spend time to him. But let us not omit those precious moments when he actually comes to dwell within us. We come to visit him in his tabernacle or in the monstrance. Let us be awful mindful when he comes to visit us in our tabernacles, to spend time with us. And may, when he comes and pays us this visit to spend time with us, may we too spend some time with him, telling him of our love, our needs, whatever else that enters into our heart that we feel we should share with our Lord when he comes to pay us this visit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.